Every once in a while I would see an image and just kind of would stop me in my tracks. And I'd say the first one I saw was of Max Roach playing in the Three Deuces. Max Roach, uh, one of the greatest drummers ever, but also one of the most outspoken political drummers ever as well. Seeing him in the Three Deuces, this kind of small club in the basement on 52nd Street in New York City in the 40s, in a corner that's padded, I was shocked by seeing an image of him kind of trapped. And in the 1940s, we know where black America is. And so here's this great photograph. And I wanted to know more about where was that? And I thought, well, wouldn't that be something to sit in? Through historical imagery, artist and musician Jason Moran recreated the stage of the Three Deuces Jazz Club, where Max Roach once performed alongside Charlie Parker and Miles Davis. This historical recreation served as both art object and performance space in Moran's first ever museum exhibition, organized by the Walker Art Center. As a jazz musician, most of my forward progress has been made by listening to records. The other part of researching jazz is also looking at photographs, but they were never enough to satisfy my urge to feel what it was like to sit inside it. And I saw these images of this stage with a curved wall in the back that arched over into the audience. One of jazz's most beautiful stages was the Savoy Ballroom. This popular dance hall in Harlem, opened from 1926 to 1958, hosted some of the greatest musicians of the big band era, including Count Basie, Ella Fitzgerald, Benny Goodman, and Chick Webb. And I thought, well, what was that like to play for a thousand people dancing? And you have this curved wall behind you. That means that there's like a rotation of sound, of sound going out, but also the sound of the people shooting back into that corridor. Jason Moran's research also included Slug Saloon in New York City. Slugs hosted innovative jazz musicians in the 1960s and 70s, including Ornette Coleman, and Sun Ra. This rough and tumble club also developed a notorious reputation as the spot where famed trumpeter Lee Morgan was shot and killed by his wife, Helen Morgan. You hear kind of personal histories and personal relationships to the space. Every musician talked about the sawdust. Oh, slugs with the sawdust. Slugs with the sawdust on the floor. Every time with the sawdust on the floor. <laughs> Ain't no jazz club in New York with sawdust on the floor <laughs> right now. So it sets the club up in a way that is now like a thing of the past. And then, you know, you hear these other stories about people who were just fans of the music. And they'd say things like, oh yeah, I remember there was this jukebox and this guy that stood next to the jukebox and just whistled all the solos that were on the records in the jukebox. No. Whether that's true or not, I don't care. Because that myth is also a part of the language and the feel of what this place is supposed to be. I think with each collaborator that's a part of this show, each person has challenged me to look at the frame. When you're studying jazz, even though I was taught by some great people, they didn't really put that notion in my mind that you should consider the frame. That even when you step on the stage at the Village Vanguard, that that itself is a frame. And that frame has history too. 